What's happening, YouTube? What's going on? And so, my name is Albert. Bro, racism, bro. Bro, I popped out of racism years ago, and I'm gonna share how to freaking pop out of that loophole. And so, the way this started was that I came across a Facebook post, a political one, talking about somebody who was fighting against racism, and I was freaking taken, man. You know, since I've been out of it for years, man, I was taken because I'm like, wow, I still exist. And so I'm gonna help you pop out of racism, man. I promise that if you stick with me, you just pop out of it naturally. You won't have to work at it, I promise. And so now, the first step is to please follow me without all, oh, no, that's not true, the racism, the white, and all that stuff, right? Forget the white supremacy and all that stuff. So now, I'm gonna start by using a six-year-old as an example, which I like you to try it out for yourself. Everything that I'm saying, don't just freaking fall for it. Don't believe me. Try it out for yourself so you can see it. Now, the first step is to go to a six-year-old and ask a six-year-old, what is racism? Go ahead. They're not gonna be able to answer. Because a six-year-old has not developed differences yet. Or seven, five, six, seven. They have not developed, that's an American, that's a Chinese, and that's a Russian. They haven't developed that yet. So there's none of that going on with differences in their lives yet. Now, here's the kicker. Somewhere along the line, they start hearing or oh, the white man, or oh, the Chinese, or oh, the Russian, whatever, the Mexicans, or oh, whatever, whatever, depends on where you're at in the world, is going to freaking determine what you're going to end up hearing. So in China, they'll be like the American man, da 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 da, right? <laughs> so now, I play with kids. This is very, very important. Since I play with kids at a playground, I'm around many different freaking nationalities, man. I play with an Arabic kid, Chinese kid too, Japanese kid too. Now, these kids, they see me and they see me running around and they want to join me and they're all excited. So it's a playground. And so they are open to it. However, the parents, they see me and they go immediately, stare-eyed, no reaction. And what I'm doing is that I'm using the freaking kid that I'm playing with, that I'm with, hoping that they will see that we're just having a good time together. Now, that parent that's looking at me like this, when that parent was this kid's age, five, six, seven, they were willing to play with me also. But that parent was told when they were five, six, seven, or eight years old, Oh, Americans are no good. Oh, black guys are no good. Oh, Indians. Oh, Mexicans. Oh, whatever, man. Because they cannot be able to just dislike me unless they were told so. And so the Arabic kid that I'm playing with, he already got whiff of it. And so it already started. So the kid now is already growing up with freaking racism. Already. And so what happens is, is that now when the kid grows up, he'll follow suit. And he'll be against whatever, which means that his voice will be culturally driven, which means it'll be the drive in him. It won't be him like when he was six and seven years old, open to everyone. And so if you catch that bit, man, you'll see that this thing here with racism is generated and passed on, man. And so in the post I put, the biggest problem with racism is that we're willing to still talk about it, apply a description to it, and freaking carry it on. And if you watch the media, bro, the media is freaking pounding it left and right. Oh, racism, we have to fight racism. Oh, da, da, da. This person's going to fight it. No, you can't fight it. You can't not fight racism by words. You can't because the word itself it freaking stimulates the problem. It produces the problem. It enhances the problem because we're talking about it. And so we're keeping it alive. Morgan Friedman said it, man. When he said it, it was like, ah. How are we going to get rid of racism? Until stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man.
I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. That's it. It's finished right there. It can't go further because the kid, if they never hear the word, if the parent never told them, you see that guy, that's a Chinese, American, Russian, da, 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 whatever, they would not just freaking decide, oh, let me just hate this person because they're different, dog. They won't know. They'll be just so freaking open, man. And so that's the gist of the whole spectrum of how I popped out of racism. I saw it clearly. You have to, now you can't go and think this through because if you've been conditioned, your conditioning is gonna talk for you. You have to go out there and one day really try it. Say to a six or seven year old, hey, what's racism? Like just for the exercise, you know they're not gonna be able to answer, but it's satisfying to just try it out and ask them, hey, so that you can see that's the first step. And then you're going to see that these kids, man, they play with whoever, man. I play with black kids, Chinese kids, all kinds of kids. It doesn't freaking matter because we're not looking at that. Me nor the child. And so this child is not growing up like that with me because racism is over with this guy right here. So let's get to the next bit. The next bit is to consider cowboys versus the Indians. I grew up with the cowboys against the Indians. I grew up that way. I heard that. I freaking was <laughs> right in there with the cowboys and the Indians. And guess who I was, bro? I was freaking for the cowboys. I wasn't for the Indians. That was the way it was, bro. I naturally followed the Cowboys. Now, I didn't consider at the time because I didn't know how to do it that the Indians will go for the Indians. <laughs> I didn't freaking put that together. Naturally, if I'm a cowboy and I remember saying, so what are you, bro? You be the Indian and I'll be the cowboy. I wanted to be the cowboy. And then someone had to reduce themselves to play the Indian. And so we will play cowboys against the Indians, bro. We'll even put the things on and play because it was promoted on television that way. And so my point about this is that the Cowboys and Indians thing, it's gone. And why? Because we're not talking about it. Nobody, if you go out there and say, yo, bro, we have a problem, man, with racism. Oh, yeah, whoa, 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 whoa. The Cowboys against the Indians. They'll be like, what? Because it doesn't exist. Because we're not talking about it. And so because it's not there, it's not there, it's freaking finished, it's gone. <laughs> now, let me share what this means for me. Because when I go out, I'm in Asia, right? And so I have to face Asian people of all kinds, Chinese, Thai, right? And so some of them just don't like me. They look at me and I can tell. But I already know from what I just shared that it's the culture speaking on their behalf. It's not them, they cannot freaking dislike me. They don't know me. I'm walking in a coffee shop or wherever with a nice smile. I don't pose any type of threat whatsoever. And so it's impossible for someone to just dislike me. It's impossible and so I carry that with me. And so while I carry that with me and I understand that it's the culture speaking on their behalf and that they don't know, and so it's automatic for them to dislike me or have this thing or feel defensive, I still feel a sense of togetherness because they don't know. And unless they watch this video to see it for themselves and catch it, they'll live like that for the rest of their lives and I won't allow that to happen on this here. And so the first step is for you to just make the difference on your own behalf because you can't now go and preach this. You have to be the first to go out and just live with this feeling of just togetherness. This doesn't mean that I'm gonna go to dinner with them, be part of them, that's not the point. The point is, is that I carry a sense of togetherness and that's enough. And so for me, racism is 100% finished on that account. Now, I don't need to talk about it. I don't need a description. I don't need to all oh, those people did that to me, this and that, 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 that because I realized that all those things what happened 400, 500, 1,000 years ago, all those things. That was back then and I can't really account to those type of things that happened. And worse, worse, for me to hold a grudge, all I need to know is that if I don't tell the six-year-old that I'm taking care of, that that's an Indian and that this guy that and that guy that, he can't freaking inherit it, bro. Not on my behalf. Maybe he'll get it from someone else, but he's gonna be freaking tossed. 
because he's going to see me embracing everything while someone is going, oh, no, not that person. That person's dumb or whatever, like degrading people because of their race or because of their this or because of their that. <sighs> if I hold on to being a proud American, all while they hold on to being proud and black, proud Puerto Rican, proud Mexican, proud, 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 proud. Racism will never go away. So I don't have that running through me. And so kids are in good hands around me. And so maybe your kids could be in good hands also. All you have to do is don't freaking utter the word and take them away from the media that's gonna freaking pound it into him one way or the other. And when he learns it in school, you could tell him, bro, that's freaking just fabricated stuff. And you freaking defend it all the way where you don't really need to fall for it and say, yeah, man, racism is alive and kicking. No, no, no. It's gone and finished. <laughs> so anyway, man, I hope this helped you. I hope this helped you. How are we going to get rid of racism? Stop talking about it.